I think we have another Muhammad with us on the air. Welcome, Muhammad. You're our next caller. Welcome to Jesus or Muhammad. Hello, you're on the air. Assalamu alaikum. Ah, salam lek. Peace of Jesus be upon you. Who am I speaking with? You're speaking with Joseph, Pastor Joseph. Who am I speaking with? Muhammad. Not the prophet, I hope. No. Okay, okay go right on? ahead, Muhammad. So you guys are sitting here preaching about uh, Muhammad and Jesus, eh? Uh, well, you go ahead and share your point, sir. Get the point, sir. Yes. My point is, is I'm going to hang you like Jesus was hung, you son of a bitch. Oh, okay. Yes, this is the spirit of Muhammad. Yeah, I, I just like to point out what's been going on over the, the past couple of days and over the past couple of months that we've been having these broadcasts. Think about it. We sit here. We invite Muslims to correct us. And what do we do? We tell people exactly what the Quran says. We tell people exactly what the Hadith say. We tell people what the Bible says. We're presenting the truth. Muslims call in. Muslim after Muslim calls in and tries to distort the clear teachings of the Bible and tries to distort the clear teachings of Islam. And when it doesn't work, when they fail, when they fail in their deception, what do they do? We're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. We can't stop you from proclaiming the gospel. We can't stop you from uh, refuting the false teachings of Islam. So all we can do at the end of the day is threaten you. Well, yep. threaten, threaten away. We are not scared and Glory we have no Jesus. fear of Amen. death, my friend. And Hallelujah. notice the difference as well. Why would this person want to threaten our lives? We do not agree with Muslims. Do we want to kill Muslims? No, I don't. There is no Muslim in the world that I want to kill. I want to see every Muslim in this world saved. I want to see Muslims give their lives to Jesus Christ so that they can know Jesus as I know Jesus, so that they can be with me in heaven. Mm. Why do Muslims want Christians to be destroyed? Mm, yes. Because they believe in a very different God from the exactly. one we believe in. Why do we love Muslims even when they hate us? Because the Lord Jesus commanded us to love Muslims. And he fills our hearts with love, even for those who reject him, even for those who persecute his followers. But Muslims are taught to believe in a very different God. And if you'd like to know what Allah thinks of non-Muslims, I just invite you to read Surah 332, which says, Allah loves not the unbelievers. God, according to Islam, has no love for those who reject Islam. And if Allah has no love for those who reject Islam, why would we expect Muslims to love right. Christians? Of course they don't. And if you do, if you're a Muslim who does love Christians, exactly. then you believe in a corrupted <clears throat> version of Islam, a exactly. false westernized version of Islam, a version of Islam that is being mixed with the teachings of Christianity. Now, I'm very grateful that the teachings of Islam here in the West are being improved by the true teachings of Christianity. Mm. But uh, uh, we see, we <coughs> see at the end of the day what Islam really yeah. teaches with that comment from our Muslim yeah. friend. I'm so glad that he called in, actually, yeah. because uh, the Bible says that we should be glad and rejoice. When, exactly. Uh, in fact, I want to read those say, scriptures to show the difference between what Muhammad teaches in the Quran the same spirit that tormented Muhammad, that tormented this young man. May the Lord Jesus deliver you. Mm. It's too late for Muhammad. But let's see what Jesus Christ, our Lord, says mm. when such threats occur. We're not afraid because he, who that is, he that is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus Amen. is alive. This is what he says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. Contrast the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why we rejoice to be threatened? Because Jesus is worthy that we get persecuted for his glory. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The mm. kingdom of our Lord Jesus is ours when we suffer for His sake, for His glory, for His honor. Yes. Blessed are you when people insult you, mm. persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, because of who the Lord Jesus, our blessed God, Master, Savior, and King. Rejoice and be glad. This is why we're rejoicing. We're happy. Hallelujah. Because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, that's Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. And I know we have callers, but let me read what Jesus says about loving people like you. Someone who threatened us because of that spirit that's tormenting you, which you can be delivered only through faith in Jesus Christ. Because Muhammad wasn't delivered by his God, but Jesus can deliver you. Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48. This is what our Lord and Master teaches us about people like you who hate us and want to persecute us. Does he say to go kill them like Muhammad did? Slaughter them? Rape their women? enslave their children no this is what the true god says matthew 5 43 to 48 
You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, meaning in love, therefore as your <coughs> heavenly Father is perfect. We still can love you because of Jesus in spite of your threats. Because the God we serve empowers us to love you because we know you're lost mm -hmm. and under bondage of this wicked spirit. But I pray that Jesus will have mercy on you and deliver you from your, from your corruption and evil. I'd just like to add one very brief comment, uh, because this is something that, that really concerns me. Notice that Muslim knew practically nothing about Islam. He said, I'm going to hang you as people hanged Jesus. He didn't realize that according to Islam, Jesus wasn't crucified. So think about this, because it's very common in Islam. It's very common for Muslims to know absolutely nothing about. And I, I, I talk to Muslims outside the mosque, and they say things exactly like this all the time. Well, of course, Jesus died and blah, blah, blah. They just don't know about the religion, and yet they're willing to kill for it. People yeah. know nothing about Muhammad because their, their, their leaders tell them, ah, you can't interpret Islam, so just do whatever we tell you to do, and you'll be all right. But don't actually investigate these texts and think about them. And so what we have is that Muslims don't know anything about what their religion teaches and yet are ready to kill over the false teachings of this religion that they know nothing about. That is frightening.